So I cannot have this discussion without mentioning some of the hypocrisy. i That's my word. We see with some of these Hollywood celebrities and climate activists, we just saw them go to the um, climate summit in Glasgow, Scotland, and all these people flew in to lecture us on how we need to cut back on their private jets, right? Jeff Bezos, Bill Gates, Prince Charles, Prince Albert of Monaco, others. Um, not, I mean, of course, our president was on Air Force One. And, you know, you can say, OK, fine, you know, Prince Charles needs to be on a private jet. Tell it to my imaginary viewer, Madge, who's sitting sitting in Iowa, who is being lectured to by AOC about how not only does she not need to stop eating meat, she needs to get rid of her cattle farm and she needs to lower the temperature in her house and she needs to get rid of her SUV and her because she uses it to drive around her four kids and use an environment or an, an electric car. And then she say she sees that and Madge says you can pound sand. I'm going to continue living the way I live because in my life, I will never put out as much carbon emissions as Prince Charles did in that one flight. How about it, David? Well, that's probably technically not true. She probably will put out more carbon than that one flight, but certainly well, she's private jets lot- are five to 14 times more polluting than commercial planes and 50 times more polluting than trains. And that's oh, just talking about means I'm not of saying travel. That they make never no mind. The carbon footprint is huge, but it's probably not bigger than the lifetime carbon footprint of the average American, although it is probably bigger than the lifetime carbon footprint of the average sub-Saharan African. Um, You know, in general, I think that um, personal lifestyle changes um, are significant primarily in this fight to signal to others that you are concerned and to sort of suggest to leaders your willingness to, um, you know, to push for a different future. I think it's a virtue signal. Well, no, I I think it's more about organizing and signaling political commitment. I think, you know, systemic change is what is required to meaningfully reduce our carbon emissions. It doesn't matter. You know, I can't build my own electric grid. I can't um, build my own EV charging station. I can't rebuild New York City's infrastructure to make it um, more carbon sensitive. Those are things that are well beyond my capacity to influence. And I think the role of individuals is essentially to try to make um, those who can drive large scale policy changes um, make them more sensitive to the demands and, and um, you know, make to, to the demands of climate change and what mitigation will have to be. Well, I mean, you and can do that of, while eating meat and driving an SUV. Well, I just also want to be clear about, you know, the AOC thing, like the, the Green New Deal, would, as, as put forward, does, does not call for any abandonment of meat. There was like an unfortunate FAQ that was put out early on about that. I think that most people looking at this problem um, globally think that to get our carbon emissions down to 1.5 uh, 1.5 degree compliant will require some amount of um, consumer consumption changes in the wealthy West. Exactly what degree um, of that is not entirely clear. Um, but personally, I like to look past the, the net zero scenario and say, if we get to a place where we are doing all of this stuff in carbon neutral ways, then the amount of what we are consuming and the amount of um, travel that we're undertaking, uh, the amount of energy that we're using, all of these are not ultimately material from a climate perspective. And if we can engineer that future over the course of the next half century, I think we're going to be in a much more prosperous and comfortable and stable place than we would Mm -hmm. be if we're going to have to, you know, if we're dealing with um, considerably more warming, but also worrying about the impact of the consumption that we're undertaking. I don't know. It's very hard for me to take John Kerry seriously when he flies over there in a private jet and he uses a private jet to fly his family around. Um, No. I'm not going to listen to somebody like that. I'm not lowering my thermostat. I'm not getting rid of my enormous Chevy Suburban, which I love. I'm I'm not doing it. I, like it, let them start practicing what they preach before they look at the rest of us and tell us we've got to sacrifice while John Kerry doesn't sacrifice one thing. Prince Charles doesn't need to be on a private jet. Neither did Jeff Bezos. They don't need to be. They can go on a regular commercial jet like Leonardo DiCaprio, to his credit, finally did it going to this summit after he got pummeled on the earlier ones for doing it with a security guard. There's a way of doing it. And I'm telling you, I speak for I speak for middle America and most of the right half of the country on this. And you can laugh at me, but I'm telling you, this is an obstacle to people getting on board. This is what politics is for. We organize our societies differently than we live as individuals. And you don't ask Americans to donate their half their money to charity before they want more money for their local public schools. We have great. Well, then I'll behave like John Kerry. I will do what I want to do. And I will just use words to advocate for the positions I want, just like he does. I'm not going to start changing my behavior while none of our leaders does. I mean, that's what politics is for, so that we can make changes at a systemic level rather than requiring individuals to do everything on their own. That's why we have social organizations in politics. And I would say to your point about the difference between a private jet 
and your own carbon emissions, it's also really important for Americans to keep in mind that compared to most of the people in the world, we are consuming an unbelievable amount of carbon, um, even if we are living in very modest ways, even if we are never traveling much, compared to the life of an average um, sub-Saharan Africa, we are doing unbelievably large amounts of damage to the, um, to the environment. I saw a chart recently that was published in Foreign Policy suggesting that the average American fridge consumes more electricity than um, people living in dozens of sub-Saharan African countries. Um, so there's a, there's a difference between you and Leonardo DiCaprio, perhaps, but there's also an unbelievable difference between you and most of the people living on this planet, many of whom are subject to much more intense impacts from climate changes. Well, I don't disagree with that. I don't disagree with that, but I also feel like, I, I'm sorry, I was born in America. I have the fridge I have. I, like, by the way, most of my life I've lived in cities and you know high-rise buildings, which are very efficient when it comes to carbon emissions, way more so than the big house that John Kerry lives in out in Massachusetts and then his beach house on top of it and so on. I just feel like, um, you know, the hypocrisy is a real problem. And these people should understand how visuals work on the American public and beyond. And I just you tell me, Bjorn, because I just don't think the average American is going to be moved by the fact that sub-Saharan Africans have a different lifestyle and our refrigerators need to be, be guilted. I'm like, oh, no, I no, but I, I think I think there's a, there's a larger point. I, I, I totally get your point. There's something phenomenally wrong about all these, uh, you know, airplanes, uh, uh, private airplanes going down to listen to Greta Thunberg. Uh, but but the fundamental point is, yes, they're hypocrites, but we are all hypocrites in the sense that we say we want something done about climate change, but we actually really like our good life. And I think that tells us something about the solution that we're currently proposing, namely making a solution where everyone has to do with a little less and it's going to be a little less good. And, you know, you have to turn down your thermostat and you have to freeze a little more and be a little poorer and drive a little less and all that stuff. It's never going to work. It's not going to work for rich Americans. It's not going to work for normal Americans. And it's certainly not going to work for people who live in sub-Saharan Africa. And I think that underscores why this is never going to work the solution that we're being tried to t- being told here from the World Bank and many other places, you got to learn to live with less. No, the only way you're going to get political buy in in the long run for this is if you can show you can live better, you can live more and emit much less CO2. So we got it. We, we've gotten this wrong in a sense that we think this is all about squeezing everybody to buy a few more solar panels, even though they kind of don't want because they don't provide quite as good electricity as the one that we already have, instead of focusing on making green energy much cheaper. 